So news broke a couple hours ago that, that DeMarcus Cousins will be signing with the Los Angeles Clippers um, after being released by the Rockets quite a, quite a bit earlier. The way I see this, DeMarcus Cousins really is not going to play for this team. And this is the same thing I've said for, you know, a few other players as well, but this was one that I'm a little bit more sure about. DeMarcus Cousins signing a 10-day contract. This is really interesting because the Clippers have an open roster spot, and they could have signed him to a full contract, but they chose not to. So it's showing that they don't really have confidence in him. And the way I see it, he probably will get signed to a full contract because there's just not a better option in free agency and the waivers and that sort of thing. But at the same time, I don't see him being particularly useful for the Los Angeles Clippers. So I'll break that down in today's video. And we'll talk about why isn't he going to play. He does have a situational matchup that he probably will be getting minutes for. And that's against the Lakers. And, you know, just looking at that lineup with Anthony Davis and, you know, Andre Drummond, we don't know how it's going to fit yet. But in a theoretical situation, which Drummond and Anthony Davis are starting and playing well together, you're probably going to want to run like Ibaka and Zubach, maybe, if you need it for defensive sets. And that's when you need DeMarcus Cousins to come in as your third big. If you're playing two bigs on the court at the same time, you want that guy to be in, come in and be the reliever, especially a team that only has two bigs up until this point in both Zubac and um, Ibaka. There are other players who've played minutes at center this position uh, this season have been Patrick Patterson and Mar uh, Marcus Morris. Those guys aren't really traditional centers. And then Daniel Atiru, who's pretty clearly not ready for the NBA game and, you know, playing in the playoffs. So DeMarcus Cousins, quite an interesting addition, if you ask me. And before we go any further, maybe click subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I'm trying to get to 975 subscribers by next Sunday. So every subscriber really counts. Let's take a look at DeMarcus Cousins' stats during the season with the Houston Rockets. 25 games played, 20 minutes per game. He started 11 games and averaged 9.6 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 2.4 assists. And we got to point out um, a big thing with him is he thought he was been an improved three-point shooter. You know, that was what was coming out during the uh, like free agency period and during the off season, people were talking about oh look he's a very improved shooter this is a great pickup for the houston rockets and they were showing clips of him in practice and in shoot around knocking down threes well anyone can sh hit threes during shoot around let's point that out and this season he's only shot 33.6 percent from three on 4.6 attempts per game and you look back at his stats he's done better than this during his career um, during a four season stretch from 2016, uh, actually I can't count, three season stretch between uh, 2017 to 2018. Um, yeah, two season stretch, what am I saying? Two season stretch, I cannot count. Uh, he was shooting 5.5 threes per game and making almost 36% of them, 35.8% of his threes. So yeah, I don't really see him being a much improved three-point shooter, but he does bring some interesting things. He's still a, co a cool post scorer, especially against smaller players. He's a solid playmaker, and you know, uh, if we check out his assists compared to his per 36 uh, stats throughout his career so far, 4.3 assists. He's up there at 5 assists, 5.3 assists, 4.1 assists in his last three seasons. So he's still kind of up there in terms of, you know, passing the ball. That's his per 36 stats, though. And I think his defense at this point, we know he's not as athletic at this point. But he's still a smart defender. He's a solid rim protector. But at the end of the day, he's just going to be a big body that you throw at teams like the Lakers, who are going to be running, you know, multiple bigs like Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond. And honestly, that's not an issue against most teams because... Just about every other team does not run multiple get bigs at this point. So, <laughs> it's basically the Lakers. That's going to be the one matchup where I expect to see DeMarcus Cousins in the playoffs if he is still on the Clippers. And that's kind of like the main reason why I, I don't see this signing as a major, a major difference maker for the Clippers. 
I think there's probably a good chance that he doesn't get signed to a full contract spot right away. Maybe he gets another 10-day contract or two. I think they will keep him at the end of the day because there isn't a better option. But DeMarcus Cousins, he can kind of shoot the ball. We've seen a lot of players improve this season from three for this Clippers roster. So if he gets that three-point shooting juice or whatever they've got over there, then, I mean, he's going to look like a better a better player. We can look over at Serge Ibaka. He's shooting like 35, 36% from three. Um, you know, if he increased DeMarcus Cousins' three-point shooting by like four or five points, like a bunch of other Clippers players have, like Nick Batum and I think Marcus Morris as well. If you increase his three-point shooting percentage, then you're sitting there, oh, look, it's a 37%. That's better than 35%. It's not a significant difference. Can we please point that out? And he's not a better defender than Serge Ibaka at this point. He's going to be a better playmaker. I think that's the one advantage he has. But that athleticism, I just don't see him getting very minutes over Ibaka and Zubac. And yeah, I mean, I just see Ibaka and Zubac as the two centers in this rotation. The two five men in the rotation. And if you're running small, you're of course running Marcus Morris if you want three-point shooting. So DeMarcus Cousins, as I said, he's a situational switch, situational player. He's going to be there against the Lakers. Otherwise, I don't see him being very useful to the team. I don't know. I can be proven wrong. And, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge, he's had a solid game. I, I should, you know, point that out. But at the same time, I don't see this being sustainable. Uh, he had another game today with 11-3-1. I mean, if he's hitting threes, it's solid for the Nets, but, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a similar situation with the Nets, because that's, that's why I'm bringing it up. I would rather see more Nets minutes for players like Nick Claxton and Reggie Perry, and, you know, even DeAndre Jordan. I feel like it fits more of a need for the team than LaMarcus Aldridge does. And then I look over here, it's a similar situation. Vaka Zubac has been killing it in the playoffs during his career, and he's been amazing during the regular season. Uh, he's a pretty underrated player. And Serge Ibaka, he's gonna do a lot more things defensively, and I'm gonna rely on him more as a shooter during the playoffs than I will DeMarcus Cousins, even if the numbers point towards DeMarcus being the better three-point shooter. I'm still betting on Serge Ibaka knocking down the threes. So I just don't see this be being a very impactful signing. Thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.